so to move forward in the arm we need three bones right we have the humerus we have the radius and the ulna so the radius and the ulna are the forearm bones and so now that we've added another bone we've got some other stuff to think about rather than just the um, bony landmarks or just the areas where the bone flares out to the ends now we've got to think about proportion right because one bone by itself we have no proportion to uh, we have no nothing relative to judge it on but now i've put in another bone we need to start thinking about that so in the academic system of proportions that we use the humerus is one and a half heads long um, i find that it tends to come in a little bit under that but one and a half heads gives you a nice round number that you can then uh, use and for the radius and the ulna you can say they're both about a head the ulna is a little bit longer because it's actually overlapping with the humerus through here as it grabs on at the back which we're going to look at in more depth so it's a head and a, and a little bit but if you consider them both to be a head um, that's going to work fairly well and it's also going to give you a good idea of like okay wow there is a real difference in proportion between the upper arm bones and the lower arm bones and that's really important for capturing your gesture if you make those both the same then what you're doing is you're setting up a symmetry along this line through there right you're going to have a similar length on the bottom as you will on the top that's just going to start to kill everything dead and um, what you also need to be aware of with the same thought in mind is that there is an elbow there is a break at the elbow through here right that's pushing outwards through there it's going to be greater in female than it is in men it's called the carrying angle but you need to find that because without that you're working your forms on a cylinder and that's that's just boring as hell and that's not going to create you any forms that are going to work dynamically so find that break i would recommend finding it to the point that like the furthest point that you can right before it starts to get silly, or at least experimenting with that. We'll see the exact same thing happening at the knees as well, by the way. So uh, one general rule that works quite well is anytime when you hit a joint, look for the change in direction, look for the change in angle. Very rare that you will see one joint continue in an absolute direct axis on the, on the absolute same axis as another one. Uh, through here, I'm just also going to allow this arm to have a little bit of a bend, so I'm not sculpting a super tight, super rigid arm. Okay, so with the break and with the proportions, that's most of what I need, right? Now I can go into the ulna, I can figure some stuff out and I'm going to do that, of course, but uh, this is most of what I need right here. Um, but if I stopped now, you'd probably feel shortchanged, even though you're getting this for free. I don't know why you're complaining, but just to make you happy, let's go further on this, right? So with the ulna, I wanna think about how it's thin at the bottom and wide at the top. When I get onto the radius, I'm gonna reverse that personality. So here, uh, we'll look at this more, but basically like that end of the ulna, if you see that little bump on the, end, on the outside of your wrist by your little finger side, that's the end of the ulna through there. Now the top of the ulna, where it's bigger, we wanna look at how this is like an eagle's claw. So it has like, or you could look at it as having a mouth or something like this, right? It's coming around like this, something like that. And if we were to look at it in more detail, what we would see is like you have this, like it's, it's pointing out, sticking out through the middle here so that that can be, uh, have a nice tight grip with this, oh, well, ignore all this horrible messiness in my in my mesh through there but basically you have an in point there and that is greeted by an out point there a male to female connection there and the way that this operates is basically just like a hinge All right so if I just tweak this slightly so we don't have one bone smashing into the other bone and as I'm doing that then maybe you're going to start to understand more why we have this depth through here that triangle Right, that's to, to create a pocket that the humerus can fit into. So here I'm just gonna have to tweak the shape a little bit to get it to fit in. I'm not too concerned about being anatomically perfect with this, of course, but something like that. Right, I think I need to move it across just a little bit. So the whole idea of this joint through there is that it's like, like I say, a claw where the ulna is grabbing hold at the top through here and then it hinges around. So if we look at what that movement would be. Let's reposition that to something like that. Maybe 
split the difference there, rotate it from there. There you go. Boom. That's some ulnar reaction. So and and that's and that's why, by the way, here if I start to do that, the bone is going inside the bone. You can do that if you're a digital bone. If you're a real bone, you can't and you'll snap. That's why if you look at mixed martial arts, guys are always trying to hyperextend the elbow joint through there because it's going to snap the bone. So, so far what I've got is this claw sticking out through there, which I'm also interested in because it's a bony landmark. So suddenly at the elbow we've got, we've gone, okay, well, that's a bony landmark. That's a bony landmark, not the capitulum, not that bit that the radius is articulating with, and that's a bony landmark. So we have three bony landmarks of the elbow. That's all very exciting, that's interesting. We wanna keep hold of that as we move forwards. And that we've said, okay, on all long bones, what we're interested in is the start and the end of them. So here, I'm interested in the long bone down here as well. Uh, sorry, the, um, the end of the long bone down here, right, which is, we can just call the end of the ulna. We don't need a technical term for it. There is a technical term. It's a styloid process if you want to be really technical about it. But anyway, so based off of what I've said, we find that, we find that, and that's all we're interested in, right? Well, the ulna and the tibia as well when we get into the leg, they're a little bit different. So what we have is that the entirety of the length of the ulna is represented in life. It's a kind of, this is a true bony landmark, this is a true bony landmark. This is, yeah-ish, kind of pretty close, pretty damn close to being a bony landmark. And so what that means is suddenly, you remember we were saying that, that all bones have an S-curve in them? Suddenly this S-curve of the ulna becomes important because you can see it. You really can see it in life. As we start to flesh this out, we're gonna see how important that becomes. So there I'm just looking for that swing out and then coming back in through there. Okay, this the head of the ulna, it's not such a whopping great big thing like I've sculpted there. It's a little bit more delicate, but um, but the idea of, of this whole series is we're just going, we'll just get 90% of the way there. And with that in mind, I think that's gonna give us most of what we need. So that claw grabbing hold of the humerus, that bump being visible at the other end, and remember we're going big to small through here, and then that S-curve moving through space. Those are the vital uh, details of the ulna, but as we're looking for those, we cannot forget that what we're looking at is uh, proportion-wise, let's just move this up, I have a feeling we might be a little bit small, is that this is one head to one and a half heads. Yeah, I feel like we can probably go a little bit bigger on that guy, but there is a, a good size discrepancy through there. And you really wanna hit that break at the elbow joint through there. And that's it, that's the ulna.